Ow, diggly do, Store Nation. Welcome to Hacking Self Storage. It is Wednesday, and on this Wednesday, uh, by the way, we've got some interviews coming up. On this Wednesday, we are going through the monthly figures. I don't know why I felt the need to say, uh, we've got some interviews coming up. Uh, I've just been inundated with people who want to come on the podcast, and uh, yeah, I'm going to get back around to everybody because um, I'm going to enjoy speaking to people, I'm going to learn more, and it's just a good thing to do. So we're going to get down the interview route uh, very, very soon as well. Okay, so the one thing that I want to tell you so far within these five months that's been going on um, this year the best thing for me has been the chain rate. Finally, finally, our chain rate has been starting to go down. Um, you'll remember, and I've got some more podcasts coming about the industry report. You'll remember the industry report, it actually mentions uh, about the chain rate. And I can't remember exactly what it was, but the chain rate was very, very small for the industry. But we were very, very high. It was it was crazy. I can't remember what it was. It 67 or 70. So I don't know. I can't exactly remember. I just know that we are miles, miles above that. And the problem is that the newer your site, the higher your chain is going to be. The, the older your site, and don't get me wrong, when you first open, obviously your chain rate is going to be very, very low. But after a year, then your chain rate is going to be particularly high. But the longer and longer that you stay open, um, the, the lower the chain rate. The way I look at it is if you've got 100 units, for simplicity's sake, you've got 100 units, maybe 10% of those, again, sim simplify it, 10% of those will be... So, okay, I'll say it again. <laughs> I'll start again. So you've got 100 units. And in the first year, you rent out 10 to long-term customers. The rest of them come and go, blah, 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 blah. And then so the next year, you've only got 90 units to go out because the first 10% 10, 10 are long-term customers. Then the next year, you will rent out 10% or 10 units to long-term customers. And that means the next year, you've only got 80 units to go out. And then you'll rent out another 10. And so the third year, you'll only have 70 units to go out because 30 units, 30% 30 have all been taken by long-term customers. And that's the way I look at it. That's the way it plays out. That's where it plans out. And um, and that's what's happening here. So finally, our chain rate is continuing to go down. Um, it'll be interesting. I haven't got, I'm recording this on Tuesday evening at 5.43. And I haven't got the daily figures back yet. And so it would be interesting to see how um, how many move outs we've had. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to let you... I'm going to search info now. I'm going to see how many move outs we've had this month because I don't believe we've had a lot. And I can see by yesterday's figures. Uh, info at Stormont, here we go. Oh, flag them on the flagged. Uh, right, info, here we go. Let's have a look at yesterday's daily figures. Here we go, Willoughby. And Beverly, by the way, Beverly's, Beverly's figures are absolutely crazy because we get very, very few move outs. We get very few move ins because we don't have the, the chain rate. So we don't have the units available. Uh, let's have a look. I know it's very, very exciting for you guys. This is like, this is 101 um, content delivery. I know, <laughs> I know what you guys want. Ah, oh, here we go. Where is it? Daily figures. Here we go. Yeah, so, so far, we've had um, in... I can't actually tell you how many we've had. Actually, it appears like we've had a hell of a lot of move outs. Wow. 40, 400, 700, 800, 800, 1100, 1700, 1800, 1900, 2100, uh, 2200. So, 2200 move outs so far, square foot in in the first 13 days. So it seems to be quite high this month. So the chain rate looks as to be going up at the minute, but uh, for this month, but ultimately uh, our chain rate has been going down, which I've, I'm over the moon with. So that's that's nice to see. Um, I'm going to have to find the, inf uh, do you know what? Now I've gone off this. I just have to pause this one second. Aha, I'm back. So the reason I had to pause it because I went off the, um, the email, um, I went to yesterday's email and that's fine. This email with all the information on the monthly figures, I thought, oh no, I've lost it. And I didn't want to ramble on and bore you guys too much because you've already been subjected to more than enough for one episode of, of boredom. So here we go. Right, monthly, how many quotes did we get at Willoughby? This is just at Willoughby. We got 161 quotes at Willoughby. The amount of quotes per day is 5.19. So five quotes per day, definitely acceptable because now we've got two, two different branches in uh uh, across across the board uh, in Hull. Number of reservations were 44 reservations. Um, and so that means the conversions from quotes to reservations was 31%. Anything above 30%, I'm over the moon with. Absolutely over the moon. Um, tremendous team. Well done. 31.06%. Conversion rates um, for, so how many move-ins did we have? We had 43 new move-ins. That means we had a conversion rate of 26.71%. So 27%. Anything over 25%, again, I'm over the moon with guys. Absolutely phenomenal, brilliant. 
Um, this is what interests me here. Cancelled reservations. The cancelled reservations have gone up. We've had seven cancelled reservations, expired reservations zero. So 16% of our reservations were cancelled this last month, which is a high, high number. Um, don't get, I said don't get me wrong a lot. That is fairly low for for industry standards, but I want to be below 10%. And there's different ways and different things we can do to make sure that we, we get the reservation cancellations uh, down, expired reservations down. One, we can keep in constant communication with a customer. And number two, we can do as much bloody paperwork as possible. Um, hopefully by the time I get back to this, I've got back to the person who's asked me some questions about this. By the time this podcast goes live, hopefully um, I've replied to somebody who emailed me on Monday regarding this um, because they're seeing some... Um, higher rates of cancellations and expired reservations and yeah what we do is try to stay in constant communication with them um, and also we try and get them to do the paperwork and fill in as much as possible during the um, during the reservation period as possible because then it sounds stupid but they're committed they're committed with their time they're committed with, with their information and if they go elsewhere change change plans and they've got to go They've got to go through all that rigmarole again of well, not rigmarole, but you know, people don't like spending time doing something. So as long as we can fill that in as quick as possible for them, um, then it means less friction for them to move in. And so yeah, it's, that's what we should be doing. And the, the reason is uh, we did we did some data on this and for we only did 100 reservations, but it, it was enough of a sample size to see a big difference. That if we collected information, then the expired and cancelled reservations went down from I think it was 12% at the time, went down from 12% to 2%. It's huge. So we did it from 100 reservations, which is a fairly, fairly sizable, I think it was for three months we did this. So it's a fairly, it's, it's, it's enough to read into it that it definitely works. It might not be that extreme, but we know it definitely works. So it went from um, 12%, 13%, whatever it was, down to 2% cancellations, which... Is incredible just by taking more data from the customers so we know that works uh through our own testing okay so the marketing i'm just gonna have a drink of my diet coke i don't think there's any extra sponsors but if there is let's insert them here yeah. <laughs> i do need, I, I do need to get back in touch with people who's wanting to sponsor the podcast because it's ridiculous i'm leaving money on the table and i'm not doing anything about it i i keep saying that i keep being stupid but here we go right so i'm gonna have a little back drink of diet coke you're lucky it's not wine england are playing tonight I don't want to get on the wine too early. I'm only allowing myself two glasses. I'm trying to get in shape. <laughs> the alcohol. Right, okay, marketing. Right, so Google, as you'd expect, we got most of our inquiries from Google. We got 103 inquiries from Google. And that was 64% of our overall inquiries. We got 18 move-ins from them, which was 1,275 square foot. Here is the beautiful data that I love to look at. And everybody should be looking at this data. Where did your move-ins come from? 41.86, or so 42% of our move-ins, square foot, 41% 42 of our move-ins came from Google. So although it was 64% of our inquiries, it was only 42% of our move-ins. It gets worse. It was only 37% of our overall square footage that moved in. So where else, where, where are they coming from? So Google, we've got to picture Google. We've got to think about Google as yes, we need Google on our side. Of course we do. But... It is just marginally, last year it was just marginally less than 50% of our movings came from Google. So that means it was the majority of our movings come from other things. And what are those other things? Is where the mouth of signs used before, social media. Uh, oh, wow. We had 150 square foot moved in on social media. I didn't know that until I looked at this. Anyway, um, there's, there's, there's tons of different things we can do uh, to, to actually increase, um, to not be reliant so much on Google. So we don't want to be reliant on on. Google, what I don't agree with, I don't agree with people banging on about social media advertising and, and marketing. It just, and I'm the biggest advocate for that. I just don't think it works in this realm. Um, but there's other things we can do. <coughs> Sorry, I've had a protein shake just before, um, just before recording. Somebody get massive. <laughs> I just want to get in shape. Um, so, word of mouth, we had 17 inquiries from word of mouth, which was 11% of our overall inquiries. We had eight move ins which was 19% of our overall move-ins for 675 square foot, which was 20% of our overall square footage. Interesting. It was So that means that if we look at that, word of mouth was 11% of our overall inquiries, but it was 20% of our overall square footage. Beautiful. So word of mouth is, a, is much hotter. We've got more chance of, of selling somebody. Oh, God. 
Oh, why are you calling me? That means that he's ready. Um, so we've got more chance of of um, of converting than people because it's a warm lead. Okay, signs. I can't believe it's teas already, already. Uh, signs. I'll finish this marketing bit and I'll pause it and I'll have a tea and I'll come back and do it. Signs was 27 inquiries. That was 17% of our overall inquiries came from signs. Nine move-ins came from signs and 21% of move-ins came from signs. Um, for 845 square foot, which was 25% of the overall square footage. Wow. And you'd expect that because if they're passing, if they're seeing your signs, that means they're passing. If they're passing, they're local. If they're local, they're more likely to come to you rather than a competitor because they're local. <laughs> Further 24. Oof. This is why I love data. I, I cannot believe that some people don't look into this. I cannot believe it. And yes, you might, it might work for them now, but in five years' time, do you know what? You're going to need this data. You're going to need it more than I'm doing right now. You're going to need to analyze it, look at it, and look for the hidden gems. Bever 24, our other site, because we've got three sites very, very close to each other. We've got number of inquiries is three. That was only 2% of our inquiries came from Bever 24. However, we had three move-ins came from Bever 24. So all three of those moved in. It probably been all three of them. It could be previous months inquiries from anywhere, um, which is 7% of our overall move-ins came from Bever 24. For 325 square foot, which was 10%, of our overall move-ins. Wonderful stuff. Wonderful. Used before, not, not as good as I expected. A used before was four uh, inquiries. That was 2% of our overall inquiries. Number of move-ins was one, which was for 2% of our overall move-ins, which is exactly what the number of inquiries, percentage of inquiries. And we had 25 square foot, which was 1% of our overall square footage moved in. It, it You've got to take all of this with a little bit of pinch of salt because just because we had four inquiries that, that might not necessarily, they might have reserved, but it might not have moved in yet. They might be moving in next month. So you just got to take it with a little bit of salt, but you can you can see it gives you, it point it paints a picture for you. It paints a really good picture. Social media, four. Um, first time I've ever, ever seen number of inquiries, the move-ins, um, a, a bigger percentage than the percentage of inquiries. So four move-ins, uh, sorry, four inquiries for social media, which is 2.48%, so we say 2%. Number of move-ins, two, two move-ins from social media, which was 5% of our move-ins came from social media. Wow. Um, and that was for 150 square foot, which is 4% of our overall move-ins. I've got another quote here, uh, another note here. Three other inquiries where one was referred from Clough Road, because we can come to them, one from Bing, wow, and one from estate agents, right? Okay. And we had two other move-ins. One was referred from Clough Road, 25 square foot, and one was re referred from a removals company, uh, 100 square foot. I don't want to tell you who it is because I know my competition listen and I don't want them guys to get in touch with my removal of men to, to get move-ins from them. Okay, so I'll just tell you Google ad spend because uh, I think it's important. I don't know what I want to tell you before I go for my tea. So Google ad spend for the month is £4,399.78. Quite a lot of money. Um, actual cost of advertising for Google this per month is £244.43 per move-in. That is huge. But what we've got to remember here that we, we aren't, we've got to really divide that by two because I've got two sites now. I've got two sites in Hull and it's not fair us attributing all the costs to Willoughby, even though I want to, because it makes, it makes, uh, it makes Clough Road look a lot better and the figures and the percentage and the return on investment, it makes it all look better. Of course it does, but I don't think I can do that. I don't think it's really fair. Um, so and they're about 50-50 for quotes, Clough Road and, and Willoughby. And uh, yeah, it's, it's you know, I love it. I absolutely, it, Clough Road has been an absolute joy since opening it. Brilliant decision, really was absolutely game changer. So the advertising cost is £244, 43 pence per move-in if we attributed all the costs to Willoughby, which we can't do, obviously. The actual cost for advertising from Google per square foot um, for move-ins was £3.45 per square foot. Again, massively high. Um, I want to be, I want to be under one really. So even if we have to, it'd be one point seven two five, one pound seventy two, or one pound seventy three if you round it up. Uh, I think that's right. Public maths. Don't want to do it. Feel, feel uncomfortable. Even though I'm good at maths. And um, and average cost per moving, it was two four four. Um, for, for the cost of acquisition, acquisition through Google is two hundred forty four pound forty three pence. As I said, but if we half it, it's one hundred twenty two quid. I prefer that to be under hundred quid. But mark my words, in years to come, that figure 
will go whoop, up and up and up and up. So we need we need to have some other strategy apart from it. Can't be just SEO. It can't be just paper clicks. It's got to be something else. Um, and so I'm working my socks off trying to think of other things. Right, do you know what? I'm going to pause it there and I will get back to you guys um, after my din I might I might swap the Diet Coke for a, a glass of wine. All right, I've got a really nice glass of wine as well. I'll, I'll tell you all about it. Wifey's ringing me now. Hi, Wifey, don't worry, I'm coming now. I'm coming now. All right, bye. I realize I'm still live on the podcast. This is just real life. I don't even know why. Why didn't I pause it? Anyway, isn't she good? She cooked my dinner for me. Um, if you don't know what I'm having, I'm out. And by the way, I haven't been drinking yet. It sounds like I've been drinking. I've been drinking that good. Um, a fish finger sandwich. <laughs> yes, that's how we roll. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, I'll speak to you in literally, but you won't even know the difference, but I'll probably be in an hour. <laughs> All right, bye. Oh, that was awesome. So an update on the fish finger sandwich. It was beautiful. I didn't have any ketchup. I just put some... Uh, some mushy peas in the fish finger sandwich. And uh, guess what? I haven't got any wine either. I'm drinking water. How about that? Um, I just, when I, was, when I was having my dinner, I was like, what? Why, why do people listen to this podcast? It's just, you can tell I really, really enjoy it because I could just be myself and uh, prat around and be stupid on the professional business podcast. Anyway, right, back to the things that matter instead of my uh, fish finger sandwich. Well, it certainly does matter, but in a different way. So number of new movings, as we know, it was 43 movings that we had last month. Um, which, which is okay. It's okay uh, because of the amount of inquiries we had. Obviously, we had loads of movements at Clough Road as well, so um, it's still okay. So we had number of new square foot moved in was three thousand four hundred and twenty, uh, but we had additional people taking extra room. So the overall square foot moved in was four thousand four hundred ninety five square foot, which was which is ultimately really good, I think, because that means you're averaging over a 1,000 a month in May, which is pretty goddamn good. Uh, so square foot moved out was... Da, 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 come on, guess, 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 guess. <laughs> 3,870 square foot, which meant the net result was us improving by 625 square foot. So we're 625 square foot up, which is obviously... It's it's good. It's, it's average. So the amount of rooms moved in was 54. Amount of rooms moved out was 57. So actually the net for the month was three down with minus three. So total internal rooms occupied is 366 internal rooms occupied. Um, we've got five containers in, four containers moved out. Uh, sorry, uh, amount of containers, yeah, two containers moved out and uh, oh, five containers moved in, yeah, three moved out, which meant we was net for the month, three containers, which meant we have 44 containers rented out. Car parking, we've got one moved in, one moved out, and we've got seven at the time. Now we've only got five. So important bit, total square foot occupied is 32,845 square foot. So we're nearly at the most we've ever been, which is nice. Store occupancy is 83 pound, 83 pound, 83, uh, 83.6%. So 84% if we're rounding up, if we're not 83.6%. Um, and for those of you who are thinking, well, wait a second, they use 90 percent full. You might two, 92, 93 percent full. We've added more square footage. We basically added more containers in, a lot of more containers. And so therefore we've added more containers, which means that obviously uh, the occupancy goes down unless those units are taken. Right, lock sales. We had 29 lock sales, um, which was 67% of the move-ins, which isn't particularly good. Total packaging sales was £801.24. pence. The average per moving was £18.63. pence. So here's some other information for you doody da guys and girls. Uh, true period revenue was £73,754.82. pence. That is rent, exfat, insurance and late charges. Uh, true period revenue for all. What is the all? In? Oh, because merchandise. So including merchandise, it was £74,326.77. The difference from last month was um, difference up from last month all for everything. Uh, so if we take the £74,326, so that includes uh, rent, insurance, late charges and merchandise sales, we was £2,848.52 up than we was last month. So we've increased by nearly £3,000 there. Uh, actual revenue for Stormall, including VAT, so everything we've taken through the bank, is £89,279.54. The reason why that's inflated is for the true period revenue is because that includes VAT. Um, total amount of oh, customer's insurance. 
um, was £217,000 that we took from insurances from customers, which meant that we took just on new customers only an average of £5,046 on new customers. So we're above a £5,000 mark, which we want to be. By the way, we've increased all our insurance prices as well at the minute. So that is that is good. Um, number of times the van was rented out. Obviously, the transit was only rented out once because we got rid of it. Uh, the reason was because it's coming back to its it when the lease the lease had finished on it. Total van revenue is one thousand one hundred and fifty five pound because we put up a price of the Luton. I think it's fifty five quid now or sixty quid. We put it up five quid and uh, we rented it out most days. So we're we're taking over a thousand pound, which is means we're covering the cost. Amount of reviews, our reviews are going down here. Um, so amount of FIFA reviews, we had four FIFA reviews, five stars for service and four five stars for product, which is good. Amount of Google reviews was two, both five stars. And the only other thing I want to talk to you guys about this morning is uh, the chain rate. Let's have a look. Square footage is 12% the chain rate from memory. Let's have a look. Uh, got all the tabs open. Yeah, so it's 12%. So chain rate based on square footage, that's what I, I base it on. So if we look, this month was 12%, last month was 13%, the month before was 15%, the month before that was 14%, the month before that was 17%, the month before that was 17%, the month before that was 21%, the month before that was 25%, that's a killer. The month before that was, <coughs> excuse me, 19%. The month before that was 17%, the month before that was 14%, then it was 15%. So this is the best we've had for whoa chain rate this is the best we've had whoa 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 I'm just I'm making sums up here on the spreadsheet which I don't want to do um yeah this is the best we've had since and this was joint since April 2021 so over a year ago for chain rate which is nice to see and obviously that was in the height of not height of pandemic but it's part of a pandemic and even the months before that was 21% 21% 12 13 percent 17 percent so we we haven't it's, it's really good the first lockdown i think is the is the only time we've gone below 10 percent which was uh eight percent we we hit in the first lockdown that's because nobody was really moving was there anything like that so and um, that's why so hopefully hopefully fingers crossed the chain rate can continue to go down although the amount of move outs we've had uh, we had another 125 square foot moved out today um I've just seen the figures come through um so it's probably probably unlikely that we're well, maybe maybe it might be around about thirteen percent. I don't know, um, but yeah, twelve percent. I'm I'm happy with that for the time being. But this time next year, I want it to be lower. The idea is to get it under ten percent. Uh, that'd be nice, right, guys, girls. I love you. I appreciate you. And uh, that is all I've got to talk to you about at the minute. All right, dudes, dudettes. It's been a long podcast, I think. Uh, and tomorrow, we're either, I've either got something to tell you about, uh, I can't remember which one it is, it's either, it's either more takeaways from the um, Fidesz conference, or it is something about huh, something about your sales process and what you should do, what I've just learned. And why have I learned it? Because I copy. I copy best practices. And I'm not going to lie and say, I model it, I model it. That's what I used to do. But no, do you know what? Pablo Picasso said that you've got to copy. <laughs> and so... I'm, I'm copying. I, if you've got a good process out there, I will find you. I will hunt you down and I will copy your process. Um, I won't actually hunt you down, but I will do like we do. We, do, we often do. We, I do loads of, uh, of testing and seeing what people do and how, how good they are. And uh, surprisingly, people who say they're very, very good, when you actually test them, they're not as good as they, you, they believe they are. There's fundamental mistakes. I wish I could. I'm not allowed to play them, but I wish I could play them. And uh, people think they're really, really good. But um, they, do, they do lots of things wrong. Don't get me wrong. I, I'm sure this is just an oversight and a one-off uh, in, certain, in certain areas. And it might be picked up on, on the sales process when they're call recordings and stuff. But it's lovely to see. It's lovely to see other people fucking up as well because I know that we fuck up all the time. It's just nice to see when we do, do a, a test... Um, a fake quote yes sorry we do fake quotes sorry and and i'm sure you i'm sure some guys do it to us as well i'm, I'm absolutely certain that people do it to us but it's nice to see that when we do when when you expect somebody or a big company to be better um and then you, you see some big big problems that they're misquoting and doing mistakes and then ring you back and say oh, i'm sorry i got the wrong price it's lovely <laughs> and so it just makes you makes you all know that we're all human and we all mess up <coughs> excuse me it doesn't mean, by the way, that we shouldn't strive for perfection and shouldn't strive to improve and improve and improve and iterate because that's what that's what the game's all about, improving all the time. Better today 
than we were last year and then better next year than we are today. All right, my friends, I love you. I appreciate you. And I will, uh, I will be seeing you tomorrow. All right. Tatsuzai, bye.